we came across a piggery just outside of Canberra called Wally's and we decided to investigate it. And what we found there was horrific. It was life-changing for me and for everyone involved in that campaign. We found a, a little slaughter room on site where the owner, Wally, was bludgeoning his pigs to death. I, I should warn you, this, this could get a bit graphic in the wording that I use throughout this speech. So we found that the owner was bludgeoning his pigs to death. We put up hidden cameras to capture it. We also found workers kicking piglets along the aisles in the farrowing crate shed like footballs while their mothers ran after them screaming. We investigated for about two months and released the footage to a huge public outcry across Australia and around the world. Uh, it, was, it was massive in mainstream media. And of course the industry turned around and said, um, well he's a, a one-off, a rogue operator, he doesn't represent our industry. Meanwhile, RSPCA and the police were set to do a raid on his farm to get evidence for themselves, and the Department of Primary, in Primary Industries actually tipped Wally off a couple of days before the raid, so when they turned up, there wasn't all that much to find. Ultimately, though, RSPCA still laid 53 charges of animal cruelty against Wally. Those charges were later dropped after the Department of Primary Industries intervened and threatened to remove RSPCA's powers if they pursued with the case. However, ultimately, due to the huge public outcry that the footage received, we were able to get that piggery shut down about a year later. Tom was launched, and a year and a half later, there are another 13 piggeries on that website depicting more of the same conditions, more of the same issues that we were seeing time and time again across the country. A number of other websites also launched, Aussie Eggs, Aussie Turkeys, Aussie Ducks and Aussie Chickens, showing the farming and slaughtering practices of those species. In some of those piggeries that we investigated, we found cases where there were animals in immediate need of veterinary help. They had horrible, horrible conditions. There was one sow who had these two giant prolapses that were being eaten by maggots. We found another sow who uh, she'd given birth to a litter of stillborns and somehow in that process she'd, uh, her back legs had become paralysed. So she was at the back of a farring crate, which is this kind of cage where the sows are kept while they, their piglets run around them um, after they've been born. So we found her paralysed at the back of the, her cage. She was unable to pull herself forward to the food and water at the front of her cage, so she started eating, the, eating her own front legs. And both those times we went straight to the police, we went straight to the RSPCA, we said, you need to get there now because these animals need your help. And they didn't listen to us, they ignored us and ultimately uh, charged us for it. But the farmers involved in those situations never saw any charges at all. And that sow who was eating her own front legs, basically what had happened, she'd been left there over the weekend to see if she got any better. Of course she didn't, so they shot her. Another huge piggery that we came, we came across was called Blantyre, and in this piggery, hidden cameras were installed to see what was going on. Those cameras were actually found by the farmers, and they set a trap for when activists came back, which resulted in a five-hour hunt through the middle of the night and the activist car being destroyed. That was all reported to the police, and again, nothing happened. No, the charges weren't farm. Sorry, the farmers weren't charged, but the activists were charged. In early 2014, we visited the largest pig slaughterhouse in the Southern Hemisphere, in Corowa, New South Wales. This, has, this slaughterhouse has a carbon dioxide gas chamber, as do most large pig slaughterhouses across Australia now. About 90% or over 90% of pigs killed in Australia go through these gas chambers. And for over 20 years, this chamber had been in operation, and the industry had been calling it humane. They had been telling us that the pigs simply fall asleep. What we uncovered with this world first footage of, of inside the chambers was completely the opposite. We learned that when carbon dioxide reacts with liquid, reacts with the mucous membranes in your eyes, in your mouth, your nostrils, your lungs, it forms carbonic acid. So these pigs were basically burning alive from the inside out. They were screaming and thrashing with every last breath in these cages, these gondolas, as they're lowered into this excruciatingly painful gas. Every single pig who goes through that system suffers immensely in their final moments, and we were told it was humane. That footage was seen by well over 10 million people around the world. 
And a few months after that, we captured and released similar footage from South Australia's largest pig slaughterhouse, Big River Pork, near Murray Bridge, showing exactly the same thing. And then last year, we released a different type of Australian first footage. A lot of vegans who are activists, but um, not so much the general public, are aware that in the egg-laying industry, male chicks are considered useless because they'll never be able to lay eggs. So they are killed at one day old around 12 million of them in, in Australia every year. And the largest hatchery where they're born and, and where that killing occurs is at Bendigo in Victoria. And what happens there, the male chicks are put on a separate conveyor belt and they fall into what is essentially a giant industrial blender called a macerator. And they're blended up alive. Now that macerator is, is inside a sealed room. It's hidden from workers, so the workers never actually have to see what's going on. They just put the birds on a conveyor and they disappear off into another room. Now that, being, that room being sealed actually gave an activist an opportunity to hide in there overnight, wearing a worker's uniform, film the maceration with a handheld camera, then escape while the staff were on break, again wearing a, you know, wearing a worker's uniform and walk off into the woods with this footage that had never been seen before in Australia. And it was something we'd known had been happening for so long, but had never been able to prove. And that footage, similar to the gas chamber footage, was seen by tens of millions of people all over the world and, and had huge mainstream media in Australia. A couple of days after we released that footage, 21 of us then entered that hatchery and shut down their operations for a couple hours to draw further attention to what was going on. And that footage can all be seen at eggsexposed.com. So in October 2014, I released a film called Lucent, and this film contains footage from over 50 piggeries and slaughterhouses across Australia. So by this time, this rogue operator myth had been well and truly defeated. Eight months after releasing Lucent, I had a knock on my door at my home here in Adelaide and I was raided by about 12 police. They took pretty much everything. They took my computers, my hard drives, my cameras, documents, anything and everything that interested them. And while they were doing that, they were lecturing me about how bad I was and, and how I should go the legal routes of contacting the RSPCA, contacting the police when we believed that there was an incident of animal cruelty. And I had to bite my tongue thinking the number of times we had gone through those routes, gone through those channels when there were animals in immediate need of help and we were ignored. And here I was being treated like the bad guy. At the same time, a friend of mine in Sydney was raided. Um, so after this, I felt livid anger for several days. I didn't know, I, I had a lot of trouble coping. And one night I just kind of lost it. And I, I got in my car, I drove out to a big slaughterhouse thinking I'm just gonna sit there and watch what's going on and try to remind myself why, why I'm doing this, why I would put myself through this. And on that trip, I happened to be listening to the new album by Of Monsters and Men. A song came on called Thousand Eyes. I went home that night, downloaded all my footage that I'd uploaded because the police had taken all my original footage. I re-downloaded all my footage and created a video called Thousand Eyes, which is now being shown in over 150 cities around the world and turning people vegan after vegan after vegan. It is opening eyes, and it truly was a silver lining of this horrible event that happened, this raid. In October that year, I was charged with 17 counts of break and enter to commit serious indictable offence, with a maximum penalty of 14 years in prison. Those charges were dropped a few months later, but new charges were issued under the New South Wales Surveillance Devices Act. So I had 10 charges. Four of those were for using a, a surveillance device, like a handheld camera, to film an activity, the activity being pig farming and slaughter. Six of those charges were for publishing footage of animal cruelty, publishing footage of industry standard legal cruelty that happens in Australian pig farms and pig slaughterhouses. So that footage I talked about of the gas chamber that had never been seen in the world, consumers were being deceived for 20 years, I was charged for publishing that footage. This was the first case of what's called ag-gag laws in Australia. And after about two years of court dates, it finally went to trial in August this year. A three-day trial was set. Police turned up with these huge boxes of evidence, these smug looks on their faces. 
but their case was flawed in many ways, um, the most notable of which was that in our constitution there's an implied freedom of political communication in that they're not supposed to use laws in a way that pre prevent people from finding out and discussing matters of legitimate public interest and political matters, and animal rights clearly is a political matter. Um, but we didn't even get to that argument because the police were unable to prove that they had obtained the correct authorization from the state government to lay the charges in the first place. The magistrate spoke of what he called the incompetence of the police and lent, lamented at the vast time and resources that had been spent on relatively minor offences at the expense of the reputation and well-being of myself and my co-defendant. And he then dismissed all charges just over one hour into a three-day trial. Our lawyers immediately stood up and sought costs and the police were ordered to pay a sum of $56,000. So I'm currently working on a follow-up film to um, to Lucen. It's called Dominion. It's coming out in March 2018. Um, I would have loved to be able to show the trailer here today, but I can't. But if you go to watchdominion.com, you'll be able to see that trailer. About a week after that was released, it had over a million views. And Dominion, I'm hoping, will serve as Australia's answer to Earthlings. Because when people watch Earthlings these days, they say, oh, that's America, it doesn't apply to Australia, or, oh, that's old footage. So Dominion is Australian recent footage showing what happens to not every animal, but, but um, you know, a wide variety of animals, a wide variety of ways that animals are used and abused in Australia. So the way they're used for food, for entertainment, for clothing, um, for medical research, etc. Dominion will premiere in, in Melbourne uh, on March 29 next year, followed by screenings around the country, including here in Adelaide, culminating in what I'm tentatively calling the Dominion March, where I hope to see over a thousand people taken to the streets of Melbourne to show the footage from that film to the public. And following that, we're going to have six months of guerrilla marketing, constituting what I call the Empire Project. Coordinated actions and outreach aimed at pushing for the tipping point where this movement will snowball beyond control, with Dominion and a couple of other Aussie Farms tools at its centre. One of those tools is called the Repository. If you go to aussiefarms.org.au now, you'll see this website, the Repository. It's basically a giant uh, database, a giant collection of over 12,000 photos, um, hundreds of hours of footage, campaign materials, industry documents, research articles, and details about facilities. So there's over 2,000 factory farms and slaughterhouses detailed um, in a directory on that website. And that website is open to anyone to upload and contribute their own material. So if you happen to go to an event where animals are being abused, or you happen to break into a chicken farm or something like that, you've now got a place where you can put that footage to build up towards this, this overall picture of what's going on, in, um, what's happening to animals in our country. The aim is to bring together every piece of evidence and material into the one place to make the world's largest, most comprehensive database, clearly laying out every aspect of those industries that profit from the exploitation of animals. So Aussie Farms operates under the belief that animal abuse industries rely on secrecy and deception, using marketing ploys such as humanely slaughtered and free range, and imagery depicting happy animals living out their days in rolling green hills in the sunshine. But by breaking down this secrecy and making it easier for consumers to see the truth about what their purchases support, and easier also for us as activists to spread that truth, the commercialized abuse and exploitation of animals will slowly but surely come to an end. I believe that information, freely and readily accessible, is our greatest and most powerful tool. And that's what Aussie Farms is all about. That's what I'm working on. Um, and if you want to get involved, if you go to the Aussie Farms website, there's a volunteer page on there. Fill out your details and, um, and please help me in, in making this industry that's dependent on secrecy, forcing transparency upon them to hopefully bring them to an end. Um, that's about all. How am I doing for time? Five? Five?